I had a comment on my channel, I was doing some garage band demos by somebody who told me to stop praising Apple and they make machines that go wrong all the time or they have built-in obsolescence or they have this or that or the other. Now, whatever your theories on, gar on uh, Apple products, and you know, I can see this built-in obsolescence thing. I don't like lots of software updates, so I switch the thing off at night. If you switch it off at night and it's not connected to Wi-Fi, it's not going to throw new software at you unless you want it to. So I get that. I understand that. But there are very simple precautions that you can take. Uh, so I have a 2010 iPad, which is the iPad 2, and that still runs its version of GarageBand, which is an 8-track device. However, my main point here really is the price. Somebody said musicians, the same person said, musicians can't afford this stuff, can't afford Apple stuff. OK, so this is where I'm going to unpick that argument because I don't see it at all. The iPad, the eighth generation iPad at the end of 2020 will cost you £329. For that £329, you get the hardware, but you also get all the recording software that you could possibly want in the shape of GarageBand for iOS. It's free and it's extremely good. I've made about a hundred films about GarageBand. Every time I make a film, every time I play with it, I discover something new about it. It's immensely good. Well, the sounds are great. The way of working is great. The workarounds, I've just made a video on those, really good. It's designed beautifully. There is one other machine on the market that will offer 32 track recording, just one other machine. And that is the Tascam, which is the Porter Studio. It's the DP32SD and it's fantastic. I've just watched a demo of it and I'm blown away by it. Now this is really, really handy piece of kit to have because it's kind of catering for the non-computer musician, somebody who doesn't know whether to go Mac, PC, Cubase, but whatever. They just want something to use, and there is a massive market for this. Not only that, but you also have the hardware on the Tascam. So you would have eight microphone inputs, for example, on XLRs with phantom power. You don't have that on the iPad, although you can buy bits and pieces to add on to the iPad in order that the quality is ramped up a bit, especially with the microphone. Now, the iPad, the eighth generation, comes in at £329. That's what I've just seen on Google that you can get from one of the major retailers. The Tascam comes in at £400. So it's a little bit more expensive, but you get a few extra things on the Tascam that you wouldn't get on the iPad. However, you can buy bits of hardware that will tack on to the side of the iPad. So if you're a guitarist who's a singer as well, you simply buy a guitar interface, which is about £20. And then you can buy the Zoom IQ6, for example, which is a stereo microphone, really nice stereo mic for about £70. So we're at £400 with the iPad then, with those bits connected. The Tascam has built-in inputs for guitar and microphone, but you do need to have an extra mic with the Tascam. Both of these machines have effects and EQ built in, but the Tascam is a little bit more tactile in that you do have physical faders, whereas on GarageBand, everything is touchscreen. GarageBand, however, has a distinct advantage in that you have lots and lots of drum rhythms, drum sounds, bass sounds, keyboard sounds, and they're all fantastic quality. It's unbelievable. Now, if we rewind 40 years plus, Tascam, came out in 1979 with the four track machine, the four track Porter Studio on cassette. It was expensive, really expensive when you consider what today's technology can do. If indeed you wanted to go the full 32 track digital recording in 1978-79, you would buy the 3M digital tape recorder. I think Mitsubishi also made one. 32 track open reel digital tape recorder. However, the expense was unimaginable, not to mention the electricity bill to run it, and also the fact that you needed a mixing desk to go with it, and all the outboard effects, and lots of cabling, 
and a big room to put it in. You know, huge, huge budget. Really, it was a case of you bought yourself a 32 track studio or you bought an entire street of small houses that you could then rent out. So most of us can't buy a street of houses to rent out. However, for £400, you can have all of this technology at your fingertips. So I would counter the affordability thing by saying it's completely affordable. Just save up. It's what, 20 nice Indian takeaways. <laughs> I don't know. Or it's 40 pints of beer. That's not very many pints of beer. If you put that aside, you can go and have your 32 track audio recording device. The Tascam has one that has some mastering software on it, which is really useful. The iPad, the GarageBand doesn't. However, for about another £20, you can buy Final Touch by Positive Grid, which is a fantastic mastering platform. And of course, with the iPad, you can also video things. You can take photos of stuff. You can organize things on the list goes on and on and on. So I think People that are annoyed by the Apple thing are probably more annoyed with the fact that they've cornered the market and that everybody else has gone, how can we ever compete with this?